Hi everyone, this is Ashley with CT and Rena Digitals. I'm going to show you how to use uh, my second collection of my window shadow overlays in Photoshop. I do have a collection one already. Um, it's actually been, already been a couple years since it's been out. Um, and those are mostly overlays for the back of the backdrop. I wanted to do a second collection to include some more for the floor. Uh, the second collection also has some that go on the background as well. Um, but if you do already have the first collection, the second collection, um, none of them are going to be going to be exactly the same. Um, so if you're worried about that, buying the collection two, if you already have collection one, it is a whole new set of overlays. Um, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to do one in case you don't have the first collection yet or haven't watched that tutorial. I'm going to do one to show how to place it behind your subject. And then I'm going to do an edit to show you how to use uh, the floor ones as well. So I'm going to go ahead and on my background layer, I'm going to go to my quick selection tool and select subject up at the top. Wait for that to work. And then it's not really going to matter so much down here. It's just habit. I just select what they didn't, what Photoshop didn't select. What you more so want to worry about is just that everything up here on her body is selected. And then go ahead and duplicate that background layer and press control plus I or command on Mac plus I on your keyboard up to just kidding. So sorry, create that layer mask first down here and then press control plus I or command plus I on your keyboard to invert that layer. And then I'm going to go up to file and place embedded. And then you can navigate to the folder where you want to, or where you saved your overlays to pick which one you want to use. I'm going to use a background one. So these are the ones for the background only. And then you can see there's a lot of different floor options in this collection. Um, I think I'm just going to use this one. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and resize, change the blending mode to screen. size a little bit more here and then I'm going to go ahead and you can either hold down alt on your keyboard and click between these layers as soon as you see that icon or you can right click and create clipping mask and that's going to put it behind your subject. Now you could keep this very bright. The only reason I don't recommend doing that is because it's going to be a lot harder to blend because you you have the hair here um, depending like if, if her hair was a lot more straight and shouldn't have as many flyaways. I could make it work and make it look okay. Um, but I'm going to lower the opacity on that quite a bit because I want it to be a little bit more in the background. She's standing quite a bit away from the backdrop here. Um, so it, it would be a little bit faded and it would also be a little bit blurred. So not only am I going to lower the opacity, I'm going to come back to my overlay layer and I'm going to go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Most of the overlays do already have some blur added to them just because, <clears throat> excuse me, when, when you use, um, if you were to actually use like a snoot or something in studio, if the subject wasn't right up against the backdrop, if there's that space, it's going to create that fall off, um, more of a blurred shadow onto the backdrop. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some blur on on that and I'm actually going to lower that opacity just a little bit more and then you can also I'm going to come down um, to my mask here on my subject and I'm going to use a soft brush not too big um, a black black brush on probably just about 10% opacity and I'm just going to feather it off around the edges just a little bit and that's going to make it so you don't have to go in and paint little by little the hair. Okay. Before and after this one has a little bit of like a smoky effect over here too. If, if there's a part of it that you're not wanting, you simply just have to use that layer mask um, on black to brush off. Like if it was at hundred percent opacity, I could completely brush that part off if I wanted to. Um, and then obviously, or maybe not obviously, use your white brush to brush it back on. Okay, next image. I'm going to do this one. 
I love, I really love how these window shadow overlays look on white and light color backdrops. They look good on dark, they can look good on dark backdrops too, but I personally like how they look on lighter white. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go up to, I'm not going to create a mask on this one because the light's not actually going to be falling. The overlay is not going to be overlaying on my actual subject. It's going to be mostly on the floor. So I'm going to go up to filter, place embedded, and I'm going to use this one. And now the light's coming from the opposite way on my backdrop. So I'm just going to flip horizontal, resize, and then change that blending mode to screen. And then obviously I want that. So these rays right here, I want at about this angle because I want it to be matching the light that's falling on her. So I'm just going to drag and resize until I get it to a place that I want it, which is good, like right about there. Okay, and then I'm going to create a layer mask on the overlay. Black brush at about probably 20% opacity because I'm going to brush some of this off so that's not so strong. I want some of it showing through, but not so much. This is what I'm most wanting um, on the backdrop here. And then I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit. I already like the blur. For this image so I'm not going to blur it anymore and some of the overlays touching her foot which is fine because her foot would be a little bit lighter there if the light were touching it in the studio with an actual light um, and that's it for that one and I think that adds a huge um, uh, different aspect to your your image um, another way that you can add like say she had if we wanted to do let me see here if this was uh, a little bit up here on her jeans and say like she was wearing a white dress and we had light uh, hitting her. Actually, let me open a different image real quick. Okay. So this one, I'm going to go back. That one I would be done with because that's how I would use that for that image. I want to show you a different way um, to use the floor ones and kind of make the dress or the gown or the fabric or whatever you're using a little bit brighter um, to kind of match the light that's hitting your subject. And I'll kind of, it'll make more sense once I do it. So I'm going to go up to, again, I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to create a layer mask on this one yet. We'll see. Um, file, place embedded, and pick see here. Let's try, let's try this one. Okay. And again, the light's coming from the opposite way. So I'm going to flip it, resize, change my blending mode, get it to match my windows a little bit here. Okay. And now as you can see, we do need to delete some of it here. So I am going to create a layer mask, which you can still do even after you place um, place your overlay. Come to your background image, go to your quick selection tool, select subject, and then go ahead and duplicate that layer, create a layer mask, control or command plus I on your keyboard to invert that layer, and then create that clipping mask. Okay, and then I'm going to come down here to my mask and a black brush at 100% opacity because I don't want, there's not going to be much light showing through uh, right here because the shadow from her is would block that. Um, and then I'm going to take it down to about 20% and just brush off a little bit of that window light coming in up here. And now, so as you can see, it doesn't make much sense that there's very bright light on the floor here and there's not bright light on her um, her wrap here. So I'm going to go down to my background layer. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to use my dodge tool on highlights. And I'm going to do, let's do about 50% exposure. And then I'm going to come down where the light would be hitting her a little bit more on her wrap here. And I'm going to brighten that edge of her fabric up uh, quite a bit. And now it's only going to do it on the fabric because we created that layer mask. I'm just going to feather it down 
Um, and then I'm going to lower the opacity on that. If you need to create a layer mask, because up here it created a little bit more than I wanted to. Oops. Use a black brush. And you can brush some of it off if you need to. I added a little bit too much up there. Um, and now as you can see, that added a lot more highlight to her wrap. So now it's going to make more sense. And it's going to actually look like that light is also falling onto her wrap and not just onto the floor. Because obviously that part of her wrap would be brighter if there were light shining onto it. Um, so I wanted to show how to use that. Because you're not always going to have an image that has this negative space. And it's going to have to hit your subject. Um, and I think that's important to learn how to do different um, use it different ways. Um, I didn't really pay attention to the angle of the window. It might be coming from a different way that's going to matter, um, but that is how I would just to show how to use that and to make your subject a little bit brighter in areas uh, if you need to. Um, if you have any questions, this is just another another background one. Um, if you have any questions, you can send me a message. If you are a studio photographer, I'd love you to join my group on Facebook. I will link it in the description. Um, when you are requesting to join, I've been having to decline a lot of people. You do have to put in your information um, for your website or just your Facebook page or just make sure it's visible on your Facebook page. Um, I get a lot of spam trying spam accounts trying to join the group so if that that stuff is not visible that you're actually um, a professional photographer you it will be um, declined um, and I also have if you want more tutorials like this I have lots of tutorials that are similar on uh, my YouTube channel which I will also link in the description